Good night, everybody. This is our third edition of Go Have Fun, our little Q&A sessions that we've been having with fitness experts all over the place. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, speed and core strength. Um, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Our, our host is a former champion himself, and his uh, son happens to be the top sevens ref in the States right now. You might have heard of Cisco Lopez. His dad is a legend too. Pancho Lopez is with us. But I wanted to let you know first tonight, Facebook was having some issues. So we decided we're just going to have our little conversation, our Q&A, um, and we're just going to upload it later. So um, we wanted to do it live. but So it basically is live. But anyway, we're just going to go. So I uh, want to go ahead and um, first do some shout outs to some LROs. So this is actually brought out um, the best in, in, in everybody. So we've seen some societies decide to use this as an opportunity to motivate their own people. And they've done their own, like uh, the New England Referee Society, they've, uh, they've used this and made their own uh, raffle for their own people. So I think that's really nice. And um, they've uh, had some good participation. Um, the Referee Society of Virginia, um, they have very small numbers, uh, but they've, um, they're standing out as well as Ohio. But um, in Virginia, I want to shout out to LV and um, everyone knows who LV is. She works out twice a day, superstar, uh, puts on lots of miles there in the uh, high performance. And um, Pete Chamberlain, you have been entering every single day as well as Renee Ottenberg, y'all have done an outstanding job. So uh, we're gonna get back to um, talking to Poncho. Poncho, how are you? Very good, how are you tonight? I'm all right. We are rolling with the punches, <laughs> as they would say. Um, and everything's good. Why don't you just give me some of your background about you know running and jumping tall and things like that. Okay, well, you know, the rugby community, as well as the track and field community, knows me as Pancho, Pancho Lopez. I'm from Mexico. Um, I ran track and field for the University of Texas at El Paso back in the mid 80s. That's where I got my kinesiology and sport and sciences uh, degree. I've coached track and field on and off. You know, I'm a guy that's still very active at my age. So uh, I try not to coach as much so that I can uh, do my own thing, but I'm always glad to lay a helping hand to uh, people that want to develop some of their skills. My um, specialty is in strength and power development in sprinting. Um, I was a 400 meter hurdler. That's uh, how I was a national champion in that event. You know, I also, of course, run the 100, 200, 400, not as, uh, as uh, fast as I did the 400 hurdles. And I've actually should have been more of a half miler, but um, 400 hurdles pay the bills. And, uh, uh, you know, I just stuck to it. You know, when they talk to me about running the half mile, I'm like, oh my God, that's uh, twice the time training. I'll just stick to, to my three hours yeah. day training. So uh, I do have a lot of expertise in middle distance running, you know. Um, one of the spins I always try to do for the people that I care or that ask for uh, help in running and sprinting in general is, uh, uh, and I'm talking about the referees, it's, you know, try to get them in this mode of how efficient they can become as runners so that they can become more efficient referees also, correct? A referee that is, uh, more efficient displacing himself, herself running, will have an easier time being there at the breakdown and making a more proper call. Uh, having heart rate in check, and you know we all know as referees that it can get crazy at times, quite frantic. So there's nothing better than being in shape in the best shape possible so that at least your physiology, it's being relaxed as much as possible so that you can be there and make a call that's going to be good for your game. So I'm really glad you just mentioned the fact that you have to relax. Now, a lot of people, when they go out and they do their sprints, they're like, you know what I mean? And if you, yeah, right. 
But if you watch a race, uh, like a hundred meter turn of, of like, you know, the pros, their faces are all like, brrr, like there's like blowing in the wind because they like have no expression because they're all like so just that whole zone focus and they're all completely relaxed. Like when you get in the blocks and all of that kind of stuff, how, how did you get yourself to relax to run your best? Um, you know, I, I got a, I got a good start. I, uh, I was in my mid teenage years when I started in track and field kind of by accident, really, they needed a track and field runner at my high school. Everybody knew that I was a cyclist. So they knew I was in shape and they asked me to come down and help them with the four by four really. Uh, but I was rather young. So there's nothing better than to start young and to begin setting in all these neuromuscular patterns so that you come you, you you get all these good habits from the beginning so i was pretty lucky that i started young enough and that i had coaches that stressed that uh, sometimes instead of calling it relaxation i like to call it a lack of tension because often when i you know been a track and field coach and I have a runner running the four by 400 and I'm like, relax, relax. And he's like, you know, and he's just like, slows down. I'm like, no, I didn't say slow down, like, relax. <laughs> so we don't want to confuse that term either. What we don't want is for your body to become tense to where your energy is dissipating everywhere instead of helping you go forward. So, um, you know, when I was a kid, uh, I had a coach that um, gave me little techniques. Like I remember having to hold two uh, grass leaves on my fingertips and just run very gingerly on my That's arm. So, cool. and so I, I picked up a lot of uh, very good habits from the beginning. Something I encourage all our referees or, or anybody that's uh, interested in, in um, becoming an efficient uh, sprinter or faster runner um, um, always look for maybe your local coach, a local club that can keep an eye on you. We have a lot of resources on the, on the internet, but there's nothing like hitting up a local club, uh, spending some of that, uh, camaraderie among other sprinters, among other runners. And somebody physically is looking at you every day and telling you the things that you need to do. Uh, for instance, uh, relaxing or lack of tension. Um, we'll touch up right now. We'll talk later a little bit about what good posture in sprinting and running is. Um, so I was lucky enough to answer your question. I was lucky enough that I started young where we, I, I picked up good habits from the beginning because when you pick up bad habits, then it becomes twice as hard to get rid of the bad habits to become a more efficient sprinter. Yeah, I know when I started refereeing, um, I looked really awkward running. Um, I was described as a, uh, I don't know, baby horse or uh, uh, I don't know. There were so many. Prancing horse, prancing? Yeah, the prance or whatever. Me. I never said that. It wasn't me. <laughs> but I mean, I did, when I did finally like work with a sprint coach and I learned the, some drills and I learned technique. Um, and obviously, you know, I was conditioning but I mean that's when I really started to see the change when I got my body in line when I got my uh my legs thinking the way they're supposed to to you know the a skips and b skips that just helps you get everything you know your red your cadence uh, your legs turning over quicker um and one thing I like that um another sprint coach I worked with um we were on the track and he's just like feel it like and listen to it so we never worked out with, uh, you know, earbuds or whatever, which is just like, listen to the sound your feet make on the track and try to tear up the track with your shoes when you're taken off, you know, like give me these external cues. But um, I would listen and it would be like, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. And so someone was like, your glutes aren't firing. What is someone supposed to do with their glutes aren't firing, Poncho? Fire them up. <laughs> well, you know, those are sometimes not necessarily that it's just the glutes. Everything has to work together when, when you're running, when you're sprinting, correct? And 
I know when you talked to me about doing this uh, meeting, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, core strength and how it relates to sprinting and running. And so many times you have that sort of issue where you're not um, symmetrical one side on the other. And it's not necessarily that it's the glutes. It might be that your core is not balancing your body properly. It might be something silly like you're maybe overstriding on one side. Uh, maybe you're very leg dominant on another. And so you're actually developing more force on one leg than the other. So, you know, training, it's all about the yin and the yang. Um, balancing your body, putting all aspects of training together, right? When you are trying to become a more efficient runner, and let me, and let me say before I go on to that, because a lot of the people will say, well, you know, I wasn't born for sprinting, or I, I'm not that strong, or I don't have what it takes. Uh, you know, everybody can learn good technical habits to become a more efficient runner or a more efficient sprinter. Some people say, yeah, running and sprinting is not the same, but there are elements in running or sprinting that are the same, right? Um, so we want to tie everything together. The way that core works in sprinting or running is that by having all your muscles in your midsection, in your core tight, then that becomes a platform for your arms and your legs to work together. Without that, then arms are going in one direction or, and, and legs might be going in another direction, so to speak. What I mean is they're not coordinated, right? They're not working together to become one. And so that's the, the importance of, of core in, in sprinting and running. Um, so everybody that wants to come into a faster type of running can learn proper technique. Because once you set those neuromuscular patterns in your body, then that helps you become, of course, more efficient. So we have, and let me show you, maybe I can show you, let me tell you just a little bit. One of the things when I ran track and field at, at, my, at, my, um, at my height, I was lucky to work with Soviet coaches. I'm that old. I, I worked, I actually ran against the Soviet Union and I was able to work with some of the Soviet coaches, oh. some of the Cuban coaches. And so I have that experience from the Eastern Bloc. In fact, I probably spend more time with them training and they have a whole different uh, philosophy of training. But they I did also- a lot of CrossFit type training, didn't they? A lot of circuit training. Of, yeah, yeah, back in the day when CrossFit was nothing. Like I remember, I mean, not, not a thing yet, not an item. Um, I remember doing things, for example, like uh, with 135 pounds, the Olympic bar and 245s, clean, jerk, down to your chest, down to the ground. Uh, 20 of those and then get out and run 100 meters just striding and trying to use good technique. Wow. So we would do stuff like that or we would do like the horizontal bar on the gym and we would do, I don't know what you call them, where you curl your body backwards up. Oh, like bar. total bar. Yeah, make a press, okay. come down, do another one. So we do, um, I don't know, 10 of those and then come down and do on the long jumping pit 25 times plus 100 meters. You know, we do really crazy stuff. Uh, uh, but let me tell you, one would get very strong as general conditioning before the season began. That's great. So, so when we talk about, when we get faster, we have to have, basically we need stronger muscles to be able to push ourselves away from the ground, right? That's gonna help us move faster if we can move more powerfully forward. So you were talking about lifts, uh, a lot like uh, squats, different variations of squats and um, cleans and so forth. Some people don't have Olymp uh, like Olympic weight lifting experience, but um, the good old fashioned back squat would, would do people a lot of good, right? Yes, yes. Sprinting is all about uh, putting force down into the ground to propel yourself forward. And that's one, another item that we tie the core in correctly. 
when you are trying to bring your power down to the ground, then your core has to be that platform which enables you to become a column, a pillar that is going forward. So one of the things we want to do after getting general conditioning for your body is to begin to develop your strength. For years, many years, about 12 years, all I did was squat and uh, clean, clean and jerk or snatches, maybe hand cleans kind of stuff. So I was on a diet of that sort of uh, lifting. I recommend it to everybody. If you are really trying to develop your, your sprinting power, strength and power, um, clean and jerk is uh, a must, an item that you have to learn. Also hit your local coach or watch a lot of videos on YouTube, but uh, cleaning, clean overall, it's the, the main um, weightlifting exercise you want to do to develop your strength. Um, or the power clean. Yeah, any, any of those, you know, one thing that we have to remember as you're planning your, your season and as referees out there, always think about how you want to do this correct because a lot of the guys that do sevens know that in the summer, sevens are gonna be all over the place very actively. So you can plan that as the height of your season and then you can use the 15s in the early springtime or the winter as your general, general conditioning games. And so um, as you pick throughout the season, everything needs to become quicker. Your sprinting needs to become quicker. Your lifts need to be quicker. You know, if you're doing deadlifts to um, develop your strength, then you start getting away from deadlifts, maybe hand cleans, any power cleans, power snatches, anything that is quick that um, you can carry a lot of weight and just move it as quickly as possible with good technique. Okay, cool. Um, good technique is important. We can start with like a broomstick with things to get our technique good and then, you know, start it slow. Let me back up to something that I'm jumping over that it's actually extremely important. And actually that's- Biometrics? That I was mentioning. The, the fact that I had trained with the Soviets and, the, 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 and then my experience here at an American university. And uh, when I trained with the Soviets, it was always, uh, they always talked about keeping your hip extension. That's what they call it, hip extension, hip extension. Back then, hardly anybody talked about hip extension. It wasn't an item here in the USA until about the late 80s. That's how old I am. And so... Um, this thing about hip extension is keeping your body tall in good posture so that you can apply all that force to the ground. Not only is it essential in running, but also when you do your lifting, correct? If you do clean and jerk, you want to have that extension. You're going to look at all these Olympic um, lifters when they pick up the weight with all their, their power, they're always going to have that hip extension. So some of them are carrying 500 pounds, 400 pounds, but that hip extension is always there. Without that hip extension, your technique will not be positively reinforced and your power will never get applied properly to mm -hmm. the things that you want to do, either in running or in lifting. Okay. So I do have some questions. Um, are there any, do you have any special tips for running hills? For running uphill? Um, you know, we used uh, running uphill like a strength developing type of uh, item because you can't run that fast uphill. Are, are you talking more like in general terms well, or is something about thinking and developing your strength? Well, like, you know how you have to run up the hill, you have to run down the hill. I, I think maybe we don't talk about deceleration very much when we train, but the fact is like every time we run up to a breakdown, we have to decelerate um, and, control, and control ourselves and look tall and good posture and all that good stuff. So um, 
you know, running uphill and then running back downhill. Is there anything you would, any advice you'd give people who do that for their fitness? Um, I always recommend to referees, like, uh, you know, especially, you know, my son or those that are closer to me to try to get the situations that come to you in a real game and apply them to training. So you can certainly do that. Um, I haven't practiced decelerating in doing drills, but you can create a drill where you're accelerating, maybe doing a zigzag and then coming to a quick stop. My only item with decelerating is to not be such a heavy um, weight person as you're coming into the breakdown, right? Don't slap your feet into the ground when you're decelerating, you know, try to do it gingerly too. Like Barishnikov. Like Barishnikov. Those guys produce an incredible amount of power and they, they look they so, do. they look really like so delicate, but those are extremely powerful athletes that people don't realize. I mean, the ballerinas are extremely powerful athletes really. So you have to figure out ways to decelerate where you're not getting injured and you're not doing things that can injure you. If you're decelerating and slapping your feet really hard on the ground, no matter how soft it is, you know, you can pick up a knee injury or you can pick up chin splints, um, maybe even a hip injury. So just, just be careful and practice. Always practice before in a controlled setting what's going to come to you in a real setting. So if you notice as a referee that certain patterns are coming up in your running, then practice them. You can set up some cones. You don't have to time yourself, but you know that you have to run from here to that cone at a certain speed. Uh, always use your good posture. That's my message always to referees. Have good posture. Hip extension. Remain tall and elegant. You know, relax your arm motion or do not tense up your arm motion, don't tense up your neck, look at the breakdown, look at what you want to look at and when you're going to make a call, but always remain elegant. You know, hopefully that kid that USA Rugby got you is like really nice and tight and you look like you're like a bodybuilder. So you're <laughs> out there running elegant. I always like the outfits to be, uh, you know, the uniforms to be very, make you look elegant, you know? look tall and elegant and um, run to the breakdown. You train to decelerate in the same way, nice and easy. Don't slap your feet, make the stance that you want to recover and get out quickly, depending on your level of refereeing. That's uh, the physiological needs that you are going to need to work yeah, on. Because we have to practice and we have to practice those uh, muscle memory patterns, those neuromuscular patterns. We have to practice like we play. So we should train as if we're running to the tackle and then gliding right up, you know, and da -da 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 -da, and then gliding somewhere else. So um, I think, you know, if we can do that in training and believe that we can actually run faster, look, look better on the field, um, I think it'll just make everybody feel pretty good. Um, so you were talking about plyometrics being the like tying things together, tying to, tying together the balance and the strength. Uh, tell me a little bit about how like, you know, the jumping and the hurdles type stuff uh, helps us out getting faster. Plyometrics, it's uh, one of the best tools to develop uh, power. However, in my opinion, it's the one that is the most misunderstood. You know, I see people out there doing plyometrics that, are just not well trained at all. So first of all, you know, plyometrics is what puts everything together. It's kind of like your core from your different types of training where when you are developing strength, you are learning to carry all this weight. You're sprinting to try to fire up all your muscle fibers, but plyometrics is what puts everything together your weight training and your running, it creates a bridge to put everything together in one union. So um, the biggest mistake 
athletes make when they're training plyometrics. Plyometrics is all about doing jumps. Um, the importance of plyometrics is not the fact that you're carrying your weight and the more you do, you know, no pain, no gain, we're developing more. Plyometrics is about conditioning your central nervous system to fire quicker. So this has nothing really to do with strength. Strength, you get it with the weights or you get it with running uphill or up the bleachers where you're carrying your weight and you're doing more and more. The prime example of strength development is your weight. And so people, athletes do a lot of plyometrics, a lot of jumps and because it is an item that relates to neuromuscular conditioning, it's not something that you really want to do one, a whole lot of, and two, you want to do properly. All plyometrics need to have that hip extension that we were talking about. If you do forward bounding, every time you bound forward, you have to have that leg extension, that hip extension where you're looking elegant and you have good posture. Um, that quick contraction that jumps create is what creates that conditioning in the neuromuscular patterns that you want for firing your muscle fibers quicker. So this is never an item and this is very interesting because when I trained with the Soviets, uh, they would do jumps um, massively. Like in the winter, they would do a thousand, two thousand jumps per week. And they kept very close count how many jumps and as a season progressed, then you do less and less and less and quicker, 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 more recovery time. But I also did a training camp with the Australian Olympic team and the coach was very, very, very smart guy. A guy that had, was able to put a lot of elements together. His name was Matt Barber, recently passed away in Australia in Perth. Unfortunately, he was very smart, very smart guy. He was able to grab elements and work them together to create a very nice solid uh, program. So where with the Soviets and the Cubans and the East Germans, I would be doing <laughs> hundreds of jumps with the Australians. I was only doing 30 jumps, three, three sets of 10 jumps and you're done. Cause quality, and not quantity, right? That's correct. It's all about the quality. It's the, the same thing happens with sprinting. Sprinting is you have to be careful with how much volume you acquire. Sprinting is not about volume. It's about quality. But you keep always tabs of how that's going to come into your season and how to manage it and do still do some sort of volume and cut it down to where you get more quality. You know, the typical cut the volume and increase the intensity. So, um, you know, the, always be very careful and always be aware that plyometrics, it's all about that neuromuscular conditioning. It's not about strength. It's not about anything um, that relates to being able to do more. It's something very fine, almost ephemeral in your training that helps you to fire your muscle fibers quicker. Cool. Okay, cool. Thank you for answering that. And um, so I have one more question. So is it true you should do speed work before distance to prevent injury? You just have to be smart about it. I mean, I always say there's more ways, uh, what, how do they say that proverb? There's a lot of more ways of skinning a cat. <laughs> you know, and you certainly always want to look for what works for you. Also, that's the same with core work. Like I've done gazillions of crunches in my life and gazillions of sit-ups tucked in under my sofa in the living room. And recently, uh, Cisco got me to do uh, dead bugs and Jesus Christ, I do like 30 dead bugs in sets of 10 and I've never felt so good in my life. So you should try it with the uh, a foam roller on your back going like balancing a foam roller on your back and, and then doing those. I don't know if it's dead bugs or bird dogs. I might be talking about bird dogs. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what that is. And I, it, it, it's <laughs> like you're trying to kill me there. 
<laughs> You're the queen of doing that stuff. I'm actually not like super big into core work, but I do it because I'm getting to be an older guy. And with my skating, everybody that knows me knows that I do a lot of speed skating. So my back has become, ex my lower back is extremely strong. I got two big humps on my <laughs> erector spinning that are like huge. And so now I need to work on my core to keep it all together. There and, you go. But right, well, Pancho, it's been super awesome talking with you. Did you is there one last thing? No, I don't. I lost track of what was the question. Oh, no, you answered it. You totally answered it. But okay. um, I just want to thank you for coming on. Um, case of Regino, this uh, we talked to Pancho Lopez tonight, Cisco Lopez's dad. Uh, Pancho referees and, and coaches referees down in Miami. Um, He's helped me a lot uh, over the years, mentoring me and, and, you know, I'd send him film of my technique running and he would assure me I'm not overstriding and all this kind of stuff. It was, it was really nice to, to, for, for uh, to have him as a resource. Um, so anyways, um, Pancho, you can stick around, but we're going to go to our fit ref raffle. We're going to do the drawings now. So, um, am I in it? Uh, I don't know. Did you work out this week? I work out every day, but I'm not in it. I'm giving a chance to somebody else to cash in. Oh, oh my goodness. Where'd that come from? Look at you. That's 30 right, years well, ago. Yeah, so 30, uh, well, about 22 years ago, I guess. Yeah, that was you. You were so focused, you forgot to take off your glasses. And my tights, too. And your tights. <laughs> yeah. Would that be like a, um, would that be like against the rules today if you didn't take off your tights or no you know it's just more stuff in the way that, that not lets you run yeah i was super focused that the day i i was national champion that was actually the the national championship i was super focused i never run with glasses and tight <laughs> well it worked it worked for you but um but yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and uh i'll stop teasing you and um let me see, here we go. We're gonna do our drawings. And let me just share my, show the right screen. Okay, so these are our social folks. Um, a lot of good entries this week. I don't wanna give everybody credit for getting out in the weather. Um, there's just a really terrible weather going out and people have, have still managed to get outside and um, and get their exercise done and, and submit their workouts and um, kudos to y'all. But here comes the winner for social this week. Yay, Kevin Slakas. Okay, so here's the thing with the prizes this week. So we have a, uh, a USA jersey and we have a uh, USA jacket and we have a USA um like a training top i think so uh we're gonna go by size and whoever wins will will sort it out so just so you all know um eh, club let's do the club names again um everybody's been doing a great job Yay, Christopher Kennebar. Uh, you are gonna get either the jacket, the jersey, or the training shirt. And um, okay, one last bit. Let's see about the high performance people. Ben Anderson. You are the HP winner. So uh, what we have here is, um, uh, let's see. I'm going to give away this jersey, which I think we got in 2013. But anyway, there's that. And then there's like a cool um, a jacket and a shirt, which are all of different sizes. So we'll get with the winners and let y'all know about next week. Um, next week, we're going to be talking to Phil Dunn about sleep and recovery. Super important. Um, it's uh, going to be hopefully uh, live streamed. Hopefully we'll get all those books sorted out. Um, before I go, I want to sing a little song. So, you know, like I write a new song every week for this 
thing. So here's tonight's jingle. I might have to turn on my keyboard in order to play the song. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're halfway done with the fit ref raffle. It's like something out of a dream. Yeah, COVID took up because nobody could travel, but they are making strides with the vaccine. Anyone can get faster if your technique is not disaster. Feel confident whenever you run. Don't go down without a fight and always let your sweat shine bright and go have fun. Thanks. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week.